Hey everybody out there. So my name's Kirk. You probably already knew that considering the name of the channel. Something that you may not know is that I build a lot of my own guitars. Um, I call them Kirkyards uh, because I'm a big fan of Halloween and uh, my name's Kirk. So uh, today I thought that I'd do something a little bit different. And uh, instead of you know, just playing the guitar for you all, um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of building one with you. And uh, I thought, hey, I'm on vacation. Uh, this is a, a few days worth of a process. And uh, if I'm diligent, uh, we can take this out in two days, probably three. Uh, but it all depends on exactly what it is that I'm thinking about. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. I can take a body that I've already made, at least started, and uh, we could use that. We could use a blank of a fretboard that I've already used, or made, and or was considering using. Uh, and again, got lots of those. Uh, some are purpose-made, though, for other things. I've been working on a Les Paul that one of these days is going to get finished. This African Blackwood is the choice for that. 25-inch scale length. Be nice anyway no no um and i already had a couple of necks kind of wrangled out no no what we're gonna do uh we're gonna build one completely from scratch and um there's a couple of things that i should make mention of on that super scratch build is that on the last guitar that i made the uh, vapor caster is what i called it just because of the, the look of the thing uh i uh i still have some of the wood left over from the body and um so i'm going to use that wood it's, it's literally the counterpart. The stuff on the end uh, for uh, Jeremy's build had the nicer grain, so I used that. This has nice grain, but it's not as nice and as uh, glorious as the other stuff. That's all right. Uh, so today what we're going to do is we're just going to join those pieces together, and we're also going to work on our neck. So for the neck, um, I've been really kind of busting my brain because the guitar is going to be black, and I wanted to offset that. And this is one of the things that I was thinking about. So this is birch. Buy it at a hardware store, and uh, it actually works really nicely, and nobody uses it, just like cherry. Nobody uses that, but it has a nice singing quality to it. Birch has a nice singing quality to it with a little less mid-range, and it's quite nice, uh, but nobody uses it. I, it. It drives me nuts. It's a, it's a commodity wood, and people see it as like a furniture or, you know, commodity wood, and just nobody uses it. It bothers the daylights out of me. So anyway, so we're going to use the ash for the body, and... Um, Again, black, but something something kind of struck me. It's like, yeah, you could use that. Or we could use this. This is uh, Iroko, also known as Japanese teak. And uh, I got a nicer piece of it over here, actually. But that'll be, uh, I think, our fretboard. It's kind of golden, and it's lovely. This is mottled Iroko, and I think that would make for a nice neck and fretboard. On a black guitar, black shirt, black guitar, um, I think it'll come out real nice. So the first order of business is we got to clean this up a little. Um, well, after we do the body, we work on the neck. But the uh, the idea here is that we need to clean it up, cut a three inch strip out of it, uh, and that three inch strip will be a single piece neck. And maybe we won't use this piece. Not the straightest piece in the world. We can make it straight. That'll take some time. I just want to get this done. Anyway, the three inch strip can be used for the fretboard and the basis for the neck. My necks aren't three inches wide. They're, uh, what is it, uh, an inch and, or two and three eighths at the 24th fret, and they're only 43 millimeters at the, uh, at the nut. So uh, there's your taper. That's a uh, pretty standard fare for you know, like Ibanez, Yamaha. There's a nice piece. And it's not really off center. So here's our target piece, very modeled, very nice. <sighs> lots and lots of crap on it from old jobs. Well, at any rate, like I said, we'll clean this up and we'll uh, 
We'll start the neck today. The goal That'll clean up nice. So let's talk about goals. The goal here today, for today, is to get everything glued up. What does that mean? I mean, I want to get the fretboard cut, the neck cut, routed out, truss rod installed, and fretboard glued up to the neck. Fretboard meaning I cut the frets and everything first. But uh, that's that's pretty much it. I want to get the body blank glued and I want to get the neck in a position to where tomorrow I can fret it and literally finish it tomorrow. Um, tomorrow um, goal will be <sighs> cut out the body, route out the excess, uh, route the body out, Shoot, literally construct the thing, get it to a point where I can uh, I can stain it and finish it. The stains. So I like the Angelus leather dies. Uh, Big D guitars got me turned on to them. I mean, I don't know the guy, but you know, uh, watching his videos really was like, wow, that's pretty impressive crap. I'd like to do that. And so uh, I have, <laughs> but uh, generally speaking, it's. Uh, it's a labor of love, and I think that they offer a great color range. Uh, it takes to the wood really, really nicely. The lighter color the wood, the better uh, for this stuff. But it's it's really, yeah, I dig it. So at any rate, that's kind of the plan, and uh, let's get started. So, as you can see, there's, there's really plenty of room here. Uh, my goal, though... I mean, that's bigger than three inches. This is like three and three quarter, but uh, uh, my goal is to go ahead and just rip three inches off of this. Uh, with the remains, so the three inches here, with the remains, uh, I'm going to make the neck from, or craft the neck from. Uh, this is going to become the fretboard. This will be the neck. Uh, it's also going to be a reverse headstock, so isn't that nice? Anyway, the... Um, the idea uh, about using a Roco comes with a small problem. Uh, I don't like the stuff. I mean, really, uh, the last time I cut any, uh, my lungs were on fire for like three days. So, uh, like a person without a lot of intelligence, uh, I'm not going to actually go ahead and use a, a respirator, uh, which is dumb, uh, because I totally should use a respirator for this. But I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to see if that was a fluke, and uh, I'll let you know. So here we go. Good times will be had by all. I've cut better. That stuff's heavy. So, and uh, you learn things as you go. For instance, with that, I just learned that I need to replace that blade because, gee, many Christmas. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. I'm going to take that down. But <clears throat> this becomes effectively a workbench now. Uh, doing an awful lot of stuff on this. Radiusing fretboards, all that kind of good stuff. So we need the room. So one of these is going to be a neck. One is going to be a fretboard. <coughs> yeah, I don't think my lungs like that too much. But that's what we do. We experiment. We find out. This is not so much. That's going to be perfect. This is not so much. Eh, there we go. Mad science, that's what this is. This is not so much uh, Well, like I was kind of 
alluding to, this is more mad science than anything else. I, uh... I have a day job. This is not what I do for a living. Although, if, uh, there is a few more buyers, maybe I can. No, anyway. Uh, what I was su suggesting, though, all in all, was that that's, that's practically perfect. All right, here we go. No. Yeah. Well, anyway, this is a hobby that I got into several years back, and what wound up being um, one of my favorite things to do, it's, uh, it's a labor of love, but it's kind of a labor of fly-by-night crazy passion. Uh, I enjoy doing this very much, but, uh, you know, it's kind of like when I get the in the mood, it's like, hey, I must build! That's how things wind up being like this, because my, hey, I must build, uh, becomes some sort of crazy notion about me getting the end product as fast as humanly possible. And because I work for a living, fast as humanly possible isn't very fast many times out of all the times that I do this. So... I'm going to uh, go ahead and cut the fretboard. And that's that's pretty wide, you know, the, the three inches. It's it's. Uh, I do that just so it fits where uh, uh, the miter, uh, the Stumac miter that I've got, it works pretty well. So let's uh, let's get an example here. This is uh, Pal Ferro. So I don't know it's Murado. As you can see, it's a little bit taller. Uh, I should probably plane this down just a hair, but at any rate, it's I, I make it oversized and then I trim it to size. Works pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and do that first. <laughs> say that's perfectly square but I would say that's adequate let's take a look here yeah boy do I have to clean this room well at any rate let's get a approximate size uh, I like my fretboards cut to around 20 inches oh yeah yeah I think a respirator would have done me pretty well Lungs are on fire, so I'm just going to keep going. And there's my one. 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 And there's my 20. Let's do 20 and a half to give us plenty of room. What am I going to do with the rest? I have no idea. But holy crap, yeah, that's, uh, <coughs> this stuff is not good for you. That is for sure. If you know where your stuff is in the shop, <coughs> that's all that really matters. Right there. <coughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but I got it. Stop that. And uh, tip on this was to always go oversize. Never cut to the precise size you want it to be. Go over, cut back. All right. 
this is a totally non-precision job. I just effectively cut these to be roughly the size that I'm going to need to plane it down to no more. So that minimum thickness is going to be the maximum thickness on the board when it's done. Let's go ahead and do the tap tone. Dull as I might as well be knocking on a piece of pine. Weirdly though, it's got a 1200 on the, uh, the hardness scale, so it should be okay uh, considering the use. <clears throat> and I've never really seen anybody use it, so I'd like to prove as much as possible why people don't use it. All right, so we're going to plane that flat. And I like to use a nice flat piece of wood to do that. So there's this lovely piece of Purple Heart I've got. It's about as heavy as, well, this is by definition heavy. I mean, if you look it up in the dictionary, it says Purple Heart. That's heavy. Uh, let this a little cleaned up. Stick our piece of wood on there. side and we'll stick this part down. Now all we need is some nice two-sided tape. Oh yeah, um, I really side with the Texas Toast guys on this one. Uh, the whole plot about super glue and two-sided tape, or excuse me, super glue and tape. Uh, no, I've tried that before and I've ruined shit and I've lost that plot. That's, that's a no from me, thank you. So, uh, there will be some fast forwarding while I attempt to find this stuff, but I do have some somewhere. Finding it is an imperative. Want to do that in my Halloween horror show of a shop here. Probably underneath some stuff. So I probably need to move some things to find it. Hmm. Yeah, boy, oh, that Iroko. I'll be glad when that stuff is done. Because once it's sealed, um, it ain't going to be a problem. Uh, you know, it's all the work that goes into it beforehand that is making it kind of an issue. It's a very uh, yellow wood. It reminds me of canary wood, but it's a little more golden. It's actually kind of nice. All right, this is going to go up here. Followed by this. Hello, necklace. That's stuff. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna go back over here at some point in the future. I'll just put it down here. Let's see. So yeah, one of the uh, things about the shop that makes it a horror show, as you can tell, it's pretty pretty messy. But uh, what's worse is the giant spiders. And I'm not joking, they're not like Australian size or New Zealand size, uh, but you know, they are the giant house spiders, hobo spiders. Heck, we even have black widows. So that, that's a fun story, actually. Um, don't let anybody tell you they're not indigenous to this area because they became indigenous to this area. They were transplanted here by folks moving up from California and uh, or other desert regions where they're natives. And uh, now we got them. I killed two last year in the shop. Now, if there were two fully adult black widows in the shop that I saw, the, uh, how many of them did I not see? You know? 
the rest of them. But if you get two, well, there's going to be more than that. In fact, we got a Black Widow web right down here without the Black Widow in it. Right down there. So, yeah, uh, two-sided tape is eluding me right now. I know it's around. Last time I would have seen it would have been around here. And I don't want to buy more because everything right now is at a bit of a premium. Much more premium than I would be uh, considering it for its use. You know, four dollars is how much I'd like to pay, and now it's up to seven. So that's kind of shit and stupid. Well, here's some. That's not the stuff I was looking for, but this will do just fine, unless I'm out of it. It's <laughs> probably down here amongst the spider webs. Not, not thrilled with that. Oh no, this is out. Completely empty. So, never mind that one. Let me just put that there. So, faintly in the distance you will be hearing what sounds like an owl saying, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not an owl. Those are doves, or pigeons, and uh, pigeons are much more likely. You don't really see a lot of doves hanging out in uh, Shelton, Washington. Oh, yeah. My lungs are actually hurting. It's amazing. Not in a good way. Ah, there it is. Uh, yep, hanging out in the spider webs. Well, at any rate, it's a lot lighter once you uh, once you hit it with the stuff. I don't need that piece, but I do need some of these. It used to be that I was really concerned. After I would uh, use the two-sided tape, thinking that I wasn't going to be able to get it off without breaking the wood. After several years of doing this, I have come to the conclusion that that's not going to happen. And if you're careful, it'll probably never happen. I am ridiculously careful. <laughs> but uh, mildly forceful. So let's peel that off. Always have the knife handy with your stuff. No sponsors, of course. I just do this as a hobby. That is uh, Gorilla brand two-sided carpet tape. Stuff is absolutely fantastic. I have never had a failure, not once, unlike the super glue thing. All right. Now, you can be crazy with this if you want. Stand on it, clamp it down, give it some extra pressure. What I've done is just enough. It's fine. So let's uh, set this up over here. Yeah, you know, and this is the weirdest thing. I usually don't talk, I just think. I'm out here by myself. And uh, one of the things that's kind of causing me pause right now is that uh, I would normally be listening to music. And today is a very Judas Priesty day. So we're just taking off a little at a time, multiple passes. Here we go. <laughs> so some of the things I was talking about as to why we overcut is uh, manifest here. I did not look at the grain prior to doing this. I'm distracted by doing the camera thing. I'm all right with that, if you're all right with that. So here is our fretboard. This is extremely light. I mean, it feels like you're hardly holding anything. So that just means the neck is going to feel much the same way when we go ahead and wrap that out next. <coughs> God, 
This stuff is terrible. Put the stuff back. Well, at any rate, so a couple of reasons why we overcut is uh, planers have a habit of overplaning on the edges. They just kind of dive in, dive up, just kind of, I don't know what else to call it, but uh, it, it, it's wrong. It's just wrong. It doesn't do you right. Ooh, it's kind of oily. That's probably not going to do me any good. Anyway, what I was going to say is that uh, one of the reasons why I overcut, it's uh, 20 and a half inches, is that little dive back here, a little dive back here, we're going to take care of that pretty easily. There won't be any frets on those portions. This portions will, uh, These portions here in the center will be flat and then, of course, radius. And I go for a 20-inch radius because 20-inch radius, better bends. Um, what I will say, well, it's a pretty nice piece of wood. Uh, once this is all polished up, oh, that's really oily. Hmm, perhaps that's going to attribute to the rot resistance. I might not have to finish this. Anyway, um, I'll read up more on it, but I usually do read up on my woods before I use them, but I had no idea it'd be this way. Well, like I said, let's, uh, let's get to the neck part next, and then uh, we'll cut some fret slots. So what's really surprising to me is just how uh, rapidly, I had a thought experiment the other day about how fast I can actually build a guitar in my giant mess of a shop. And uh, it struck me <coughs> that I think two total days is the only thing that's necessary. What we're routing next, we're actually just cutting. So let's, let's take another walk. Uh, that's what my lungs feel like currently. <laughs> so we'll do a little chop chop. It's joined at the body at a slight angle. Not because I don't want people to duplicate my designs. It's not as kind of a proof that Mine are mine, play authentic, Gibson bullshit. No, uh, all it is to me is me not measuring twice. No, for real, I'm actually being serious about it. I didn't measure it twice when I cut it, or when I, uh, when I designed it, and then I transferred the design to my, uh, my templates. So here's where it gets kind of funny. If that's a 90 degree angle, you can see how it opens up just a little bit. That's probably two degrees. Uh, right there. So at the point where it attaches to the body, if I was doing a regular neck, uh, the neck uh, or the template for the neck and the template for the uh, body match perfectly. But if I were to flip this upside down, this would be a complete mismatch and it wouldn't work. So I kind of have to use the neck template as a regular and then I just cut the headstock separately. And the headstock does get a, a taper. I like Again, Texas Toast won me over. Uh, between 4 and 7 degrees on a, on a neck taper or a headstock taper, you don't need more. Yeah, they're right. And uh, it works great. So, here we go. <laughs> The oiliness of the wood is really weird. I mean, if you feel it, it's almost like some strange velvet. Well, now this is neat. So you see the end grain right there of the Oroco. And if you looked at the wood database, which I go to quite frequently, oh my gosh, that's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> anyway, so the stuff is also uh, known as Japanese teak. Uh, let's see. Do the route out for the neck. Here next. Next. <clears throat> but the Japanese teak is very rot resistant. It's very, uh, it's good for like flooring, other things like that. Heck, I've even seen uh, people make stuff. Yeah, what kind of stuff, Kirk? Well, guitar bodies for one with the electric loop here. So yeah, um, let's talk about my history with this kind of crap. 
I am absolutely self-taught at this, and I'm sure you can see that. I used to be a woodworker in a former life. Long ago it was. can't do that. Why? Well, I'll tell you. If I did that, the template wouldn't fit over it correctly because... Oh, 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 nice catch. <clears throat> because I'm going to have to do it like a regular one in order to get that neck fit. There. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Well, anyway. So... I still can do that, though. Okay. There. There, and that'll have to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, let's get this guy down. <coughs> so long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, uh, I used to uh, hang out with a bunch of people, and those bunches of people, uh, and I forged identities by talking about our guitars, you know, philosophy of guitar, whether guitars are male or female. Only two, you know. And uh, I used to insist my guitars were girls. And there's a, kind of a nifty, kind of an almost joke, it's not a joke, but it's almost a joke, about uh, women and how they are, they're not as good for you as a guitar is, because the guitar never complains about being plugged in. Uh, likes you whether you play it well or not. Likes to be played, ha ha ha. Is always there for you. And even though Sometimes it gets loud. You're the one behind the controls and can mute it if you want to. Ha! Sexist? Hell no. Happily married. And she doesn't think I'm sexist either. She knows it. Ah! Anyway. Uh, no, no, no. Gonna need to go a little more on that. Listen, I ascribe to the humor. Uh, portion of life that a lot of people really don't like nowadays. I think if you can't laugh at yourself, you're not allowed to laugh at anybody else. And politically speaking, there's one group who really doesn't know how to laugh at themselves anymore. And I'm not talking about the ones in the MAGA hats. They got a great sense of humor. Other people don't, and that's a problem. So at any rate, let's uh, let's get out the big honking giant router here. A little bit of swapping to do insofar as plugs and things. So um, what am I doing, by the way? Um, after I route this, uh, it is at that point that I will mark the center lines. Um, once I mark the center lines, I get to bring out a neat jig. It's a big honking jig, really. Made it myself with my chemistry set. Um, I bring out this jig. Uh, I get it centered for this router, with this particular uh, uh, plate there, with uh, a veining bit. And uh, once I center that and I grab the truss rod and I mark out where the truss rod is going to go, uh, then after marking out where it is centered with a veining bit, I get my cove bits. A lot of people don't use cove bits. Why? Because the bottom of the, uh, the truss rod, bottom in here at least, is going to be curved. You want a nice fit. Use a cove bit. Anyway, so I grab my cove bits. And I start routing out for where the router, or for where it's uh, going to be placed. Once that's done, we can glue the fretboard on. After, of course, they put the frets in the fretboard. And that will happen very soon. All right. So let's get that out. Those bits from <coughs> Yamako are slightly oversized, but, but they're fun. All right, so let's get this guy out. This is all we will need. That's it. That's all we will need. And we'll toughen that right back up. By the way, this uh, 
Makita RP1800 is probably the coolest router on earth. It is a plunge router. And yes, it does have problems after owning it for four years. Uh, like, the triggers don't like to work all the time. And, uh, you know, uh, little, just little things uh, that'll bother you. But, uh, in general, it is great. I recommend it highly to literally anybody as long as you can handle the kind of power this thing offers. It's like a couple of horsepower, and it's, it, it'd take your... Look, just don't make mistakes. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, all right, so speaking of making mistakes, let's... Uh, there we go. That'll be good. Let's, uh, let's try not to make any here. Big piece back here, I forgot about. Yeah, whoopsie. All right, now we can take this up. And really, your knife is your best friend. Use this. It is, uh, it is more useful than just about anything else in your tool set. You know, we could talk about the efficacy of chisels and all sorts of other stuff, but your knife, dude, you're going to use this all the time. Keep it sharp, keep it with you. Throw tape balls, because, you know, it's fun. <sighs> all right. <laughs> all the power. <laughs> that was dumb. Uh, we're going to have to open that up just a hair, bring that down just a bit. So, technically first pass has a few passes to it. Come on. There. Just a little tighter. There we go. First pass has a couple of passes to it. Second pass, I'll have a couple of passes to it. We're going a little deeper. Third pass is going to be done by the router in this table. I've got a spiral bit in there, and it's a good one. So let's see. There we are. How far down are we going to go? Yeah, all right. That's just underneath. Here we go. Oh, boy. Fun. Well, now that that's over, we got to do this one. And then we'll have our final shape for the neck with intolerance, definitely within reason. Uh, so once I start marking this out, you'll get a better understanding of exactly what I do and when I do it. Um, I take one of the sides and arc us down one inch. We usually go up to seven eighths uh, for the depth of the uh, uh, for the depth of the uh, the neck route uh, in the body. So the neck pocket. That's it. Uh, after that, I mark out three quarters of an inch here, and then about five eighths inch here, and I put a taper in it. So I put the frets in after we install the fretboard uh, when we're still flat, and I get a pretty good job uh, of it when I do that. And I, I, I'm not going to change my ways. Um, I just don't like to go ahead and shape the neck first. I'll take my chances of shaping the neck with the frets in it. It'll be okay. It's been okay before. It'll be okay again. So let's get this up there. Yeah, 
Yep, all in all, this is much lighter than the standard neckwoods I use. I use cherry most of the time. <laughs> enough this whole thing with the grain on the on the, uh, the sides here this is a very nice I would say quarter sawn cut uh, but you know the grain on the sides is just remarkable uh, it really is reminiscent of like a wavy oak but uh, yeah lightweight uh, we're not going to worry about uh, neck dive at all just that's not going to happen uh, okay so I'm now going to have to mark center line. I'm actually going to have to get a truss rod that I'm going to be using for this. Blow myself down. See where we're at. All right, pause. And we're back. Ran inside, grabbed a couple of bits of uh, material. So right now we're going to mark out the center lines using my templates. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, this level is a very good job. I just gotta make sure that I don't move the pin. So, when I do this, there, that is center. There we go. So, I can wrap that over. This is a couple of different ways I was talking about. I prefer to mark center individually. And I've got for that a special little ruler called a centering rule. I actually lost this one. I wonder why in here a while back. And uh, wound up where the nut goes. Right there. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, amazingly, I lost it in here uh, quite a while back. And uh, to my amazement, I later ordered another one and then found this one, which made me pretty happy. It's just not right. Now, you know, for critical measurements and stuff like that, um, I should probably point out this actually matters. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's do an inch on either side. Yeah, critical measurements are by definition critical. Don't screw with these. Take your time, be as careful as you can. Make sure that everything lines up, not once, not twice, two or three times. This is, I mean, this is it. <laughs> now there, there are ways of doing this. You can put a pin in here and a pin in the next one. And line it up really, really well that way. So once you have your center line mapped out, that center line, oh, what do you know, comes right into contact with the end center line. Everything is lovely. Everything is beautiful. In its own way. Now, I am not taking a straight edge to this. <laughs> I am just going to get a rudimentary mark across here. Where the nut is. Yeah. Don't uh, don't make the mistake of forgetting that the neck is tapered. That would make for a really really bad time. So what you can do is you can line up the six inch mark. That mark. You can draw your lines. It should give you a pretty nice, a pretty squared angle. And that's where the nut's going to go. That should be the width of the nut, too. Should be! So, now we got this dude, which is a little weird. So, we're looking at it upside down. 
uh, the way it's mounted is like so. So we go for a depth of channel that is, uh, what is that, 3 eighths? And then uh, gets a little bit deeper here. Right. And you know, we don't have to worry about that so much because mostly that's going to be neck body contact here. That little wedge upwards will be part of the taper. So the neck gets thinner. And I, uh, I've been working on neck profiles for a while. And what I've discovered, I don't think I've discovered anything is what I've discovered. I think I've discovered that, uh, let me get that squared up first. I've discovered that when you're doing these, you're actually coming to terms with things like profile, neck shape, what your hand feels like in it. But the only thing that's right is your intuition, is your feel. Once it's there, it's right. So I have been working for years, and I mean that literally, years, on getting my profile just so to where I am happy with the way it feels at all parts of the neck. And so one of the things that I've done, it's going to give me a rough estimate here as to where some of these parts are. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that I've taken into consideration out of the 20 seven builds that I've done, 28 builds that I've done, is um, the shape of the hand. And I went through the same ergonomic studies that gave people the endure neck, and I, I think that it's mostly right. Um, I've done my own variant of it. I've done straight uh, uh, non-asymmetric, uh, you know, just straight through this way where it's let's go ahead and make a couple of quick sketches so i'm going to just kind of flub a center line here so um so i've done my own so yeah that's not a center line <laughs> so i've done my own where you'll just have a uh a trapezoid you know chamfer here chamfer there um you know, where it's 30 degrees, I've tried, uh, or 33 degrees, and I've tried uh, uh, 45 degree ones. And 45 is, is kind of the most comfortable, or some of it, 33 degrees is pretty comfortable for others. But the thing is, you know, what, what are we fighting here is, we're really fighting tradition. Um, what may be best for the hand isn't always the best thing for... Uh, for what you're, you're, you what you've been doing, what you're used to, um, I'll, I'll 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 say it this way. So I think the point is really oh god, that's a big spider. Uh, the point is pretty valid. Um, we are born, and we breathe air. Um, we start playing guitar and we play a radius fretboard. Um, we also play a rounded neck. It's just what we do. Um, and so what we learn on is what we become accustomed to and what by rote afterwards feels right to us. Because we have no uh, conception when we first start about what right feels like. We don't know. So um, almost all guitars are made in the image of, like, thanks to Leo Fender uh, in the 1950s, it, it's made with some sort of a rounded uh, curve, not only on the fretboard but on the, uh, on, on the, uh, on the neck profile itself. And so the idea that it has to be rounded is ingrained in us, whether we like it or not. So I've tried flat radius fretboards. In other words, what Texas Toast called their infinity radius. And uh, I think that's now a thing from Music Man, uh, which is just moving where the peak of the radius is uh, to get a flatter radius to allow you to see more of the board. And I, I don't think that's, that's a necessary thing. In fact, one of my deals is taking the neck itself and canting it on the body to where it's a little like away from you. So when you're holding the guitar like normal, the neck itself is just a little bit this way, which is better for your hand because otherwise you're cranking your hand in an unorthodox way or holding it in a strange way and it's actually kind of not so good for you. So if it's slightly away from you, it's a much more natural fit. 
but I don't mean like like that. That's exaggerated, but it's just like a teeny tiny bit where it's a sixteenth of an inch deeper here than it is on that side. And when you look at it, it's like, wow, that ain't right. But when you play it, it's like, wow, that, that feels good. So, um, so a couple of things though. The trapezoidal necks, uh, your hands don't really get tired when you're playing them. It's it's a weird thing. They feel really really good, but they feel strange. And so, how do we eliminate the strange feel? Well, there's a couple of ways. Uh, for one, um, you have to round it. So if I took an, a, a, a neck that was going to be uh, trapezoidal and I rounded it over to where it's flat and faceted, well, without the facets, or the facets or the faces, the, uh, um, the, the sharp bits, the rounded bits, we, we round those over to an extreme and we basically get a rounded neck with a flat spot in the middle of it. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's okay. It still doesn't feel quite right. So what do you need to do? You go ahead and you allow for a peak to develop uh, where the neck is in the center flat. So let's say that the center line is... Cent boy, I'm feeling like Highline Guitars now. I'm just talking a lot. Uh, so th let's say this is the flat portion here. So I will pick the center and I will round that flat portion over. All right, so it's completely rounded. Now, let's talk about neck asymmetry. So the Endura neck basically goes here to here. And I think that that's pretty good. Um, you, you're, you're taking the center line and you're using it to guide where the top end is going to be and the bottom end is going to be for your, uh, your asymmetry. Okay, great. And that does work. This is very good for bending down here, but it's not really good for position shifting. Um, what is good for both position shifting and bending is a non-asymmetric neck here. Asymmetry here, not here. So instead of taking the center line and using it as a guide for your asymmetry completely, so top of the asymmetry, bottom of the asymmetry, take the bottom of the asymmetry here, top asymmetry, and run that down to just about here where you become symmetric again. So it literally goes straight down into and kind of curves into your symmetry. Now, that feels unremarkable when you play it. And what I mean by that is you don't sit down and you go, wow, that neck feels really weird. No. You're not going to say it feels absolutely fantastic either. It just works. So with the asymmetry here, chords playing down here is significantly easier. Um, your, your thumb intuitively knows what to do in those areas. You want to do the thumb wrap, you can. It's still there. You know, it's, it's going to have you kind of moving over a little bit. Now, look, I got small hands, so this doesn't work really well for me. Sorry, Paul Gilbert. It's just not a thing for some guitar players to do. Hey, Randy Rose didn't used to do the, uh, the thumb over the neck thing. You going to diss him? You know? So at any rate, the, uh, but this down here, leaving a regular profile but with a slightly flattened area seems to work the best. If you wanted to, you could move this to be thinner than this portion, but I wouldn't make it asymmetric in the sense that the um, the Endure Neck is. I just don't think that that really works perfectly well for quick or rapid position shifting. From bending, which you you, you you sit on there and you go, wow, I really like that, to, you know, quick scalar runs. A the neck profile of either an Ibanez Wizard, it's a, it's a pretty thin neck, right? But the neck profile of a Wizard or a Yamaha uh, RG, like 576D or something like that, from uh, 542D, eh. uh, they, it's like the Yamaha that I've got. Those are some of the nicest neck profiles I've ever played in that area. You just feel freedom. You can do pretty much anything you want. Um, neck thickness isn't really an issue. I like a thicker neck than those, but the shape is really kind of the critical and paramount thing. If the, you get the shape right, everything just kind of fits and works. So, um, But I do have small hands, and I was going to say, I think I got the profile right on the last build that I did. It felt really, really good in my hands in an unremarkable sense. In other words, it was just kind of like you didn't think about it when you played. It just lets you do what you wanted to do. And that's the point. So to improve it for me, the guy that got it, Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. 
has uh, much larger hands than I do. I've got pretty small hands for a guitar player. And so what I'm going to do to help myself on this build, because this one's for me, is going to be uh, make the neck just a little thinner. And um, by doing so, uh, it should eliminate a few of the problems that I had while playing it. Although, if you don't know me, or you don't want to listen to me complain, that's fine. The, uh, the thing is, on the last build, uh, you know, I did struggle uh, on a few passages, and it was just because of the thickness of the neck. But at any rate, I think I got my profile down, and I really am happy with it. So we're going to continue to use that uh, with this one. And just some simple mapping is all it takes afterwards. So we, uh, we don't really have to worry about squareness at this point. We are pretty flat. This table is not, but we're pretty flat. Uh, but any kind of... Uh, the only thing I'd have to worry about with flatness is where the neck is going to go, or where the fretboard is going to go. Everything else is just kind of like, all right, we can make it right. But this part has to be pretty well true, and it looks pretty good. See? Hi. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, back to it. Let's, uh, let's get ourselves a channel routed. So I've got, like I said before, uh, some stuff here, and uh, we're going to use it, man. Don't make me use it. Well, we're going to use it. I'm not going to need this anymore. <sighs> not for this build. All right, if you guys want to see something pretty neat. Um, so I used to hand fit every single neck, every single body, and, you know, that can be kind of a hassle. Uh, I don't need to do that now. This body I made at the same time I made Jeremy's, and <laughs> I widened the cavity a little bit, but still, this is, uh, for all intents and purposes, absolutely perfect. But yeah, the, uh, the cavity was widened out a little. I used, not El Chiselo, but the, uh, oh, where is it? I used a rasp. Uh, just anyway, uh, I figured, you know, uh, might as well do that. But yeah, so if I hold it like so, you can see that the taper and the center lines match perfect. And that makes me very happy. And uh, I really, you know, if you want a real light guitar, this bass wood, this Oroco seem to be a pretty good match. But anyway, uh, we're not going to do that. I'm going to take that back. And we are almost at the point of having the neck ready to glue up, which I'm pretty happy about. I want to put the truss rod channel in now. So, I'm moving shit. Stuff. Things. Get out our veining bit. We'll get out our two cove bits. We'll need a quarter inch cove and a three eighths inch cove uh, to accommodate for the... Oh shit. <laughs> Where did you go? There you go. Hiding under my yardstick. All right, so at any rate, so we'll need this for this portion. You can see that lines up very nicely. And this for this portion. As you can see, that lines up very nicely. Let's get back to aiming down here and not looking at my glamorousness. Hardy har har. And uh, razor blades, another very good friend a luthier, not so much of a luthier as a guitar builder. Anybody who doesn't know the difference, well, I make electric guitars by means of like force and cunning. Uh, a luthier has great skill and ability and uh, much learning under their belts. So, uh, insofar as that's concerned, yeah, man, I, I just kind of make this stuff. So, hey, while I'm uh, taking some time out here, let's talk philosophy. I'm not talking about Carl Jung and all that. Uh, I'm talking about guitar building philosophy. So I started building guitars because um, I didn't want to pay uh, some company like three or five thousand dollars to test out some ideas that may or may not work. And I used to be a woodworker, and I thought to myself, "Well, shoot, man, uh, why don't why don't I just build one?" And I thought, "Yeah, right. I can't just go ahead and build one. I got to learn about stuff first. And uh, my wife, angel of a human being, as she is, uh, bought me the one thing that I really did need, 
that wasn't being discussed on the tubes of you, uh, which was how to build, not build, but how to, uh, how to design an electric guitar from the uh, Udemy course of the same name. And so I designed my first electric there. And the critical parts of it, parts that I really didn't uh, know about, um, came to light, which is center line is everything. And after that, uh, you know, your critical measurements, nut, bridge, stuff like that. Those are the things you really have to be extremely concerned with. Uh, but you don't have to really, you know, drive yourself nuts with it. Just know what they are and go from there. So my, uh, my first guitar, I designed it in 2015. And that made me pretty happy. I, uh, I set about building it after I, uh, I tried my hand at building a neck for one of my wash burns. And uh, with a couple just rudimentary tools, I had a, uh, I had bought like a scroll saw and uh, I think a, a, a sander and my wife got me a router, which I still have down here somewhere, uh, the Porter cable. And uh, it worked great. I was very happy with the whole thing. I cut myself. What are we oozing here? Well, now if that doesn't, well, take a look at this. It looks like a pocket of blood. I mean, I'm looking for cuts here. I'm not seeing any cuts. You see any cuts? I don't see any cuts. Here? No cuts. So that's coming from the wood. Neato, burrito. Kind of freaky if you ask me, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so uh, let's move a few things around. Get this thing clamped up. So I clamped this at two ends. Oh, anyway, um, while I'm clamping. So the idea for building, like I said, goes back to me wanting to try stuff out. So my first design um, has the body that I still use to this day uh, for, um, for my, not Strat shape, but you know, like, like the green guitar used in the Sepultura video. Um, and in fact, both guitars used in the Sepultura video were my uh, first body design. It's smaller because I'm a smaller person. I sit on the couch a lot and I do a lot of uh, couch noodling. And what was important to me at the time was a guitar that was relatively small uh, in the body and was very comfortable. And it really, really, really worked very well. It sits nicely on the body. It feels good. I also tried a few things like, uh, let's wax that. I also tried a few things like uh, a flat radius, you know, no radius fretboard. And I, what I was surprised about with that, and it was a, a surprising endeavor, is that your body adapts to things like that very quickly in some ways. My left hand really, really liked a flat fretboard. I got that idea, by the way, from Sean Lane. Uh, but... So, yeah, body really says, hey, this is some great stuff, where it counts. The left hand really enjoys a flat fretboard. Another thing a flat fretboard offers you is the ability to bend infinitely. You just, the only thing stopping you from bending is your strings will break at some point, or you'll run out of fretboard. So, it's remarkably awesome on the left hand. But like I said, you're born, you breathe air, you play guitar, you're going to be playing a radius fretboard. And so your hand is locked into uh, this thing um, where you're playing over an arc at all times. And it's really hard, once you're used to playing over this arc, that is pretty imperceivable, you know, like a Les Paul 12-inch radius, 
14 for Fernandez, 16 to 20 or so for uh, 16 down here, 20 down here, um, or 16 here, 12, 10, 16, that's it, 20 uh, for a lot of compound radius stuff, which I think is over-engineered. Now, here's the deal. Um, when, you're, uh, when you're sitting there and you're minding your own business and you're playing this stuff, uh, you learn to play over that arc, that radius that the string is setting at, or that each string is setting at subsequently. If we just did it like so, where the, the string line up to I mean, exactly over the frets on a flat radius like so, um, the interesting thing would be is the tops of the strings, because the strings are changing size, would go down in kind of this wedge shape. So you have perfect action here, and this action is kind of tapered like so. So as you're playing down, instead of going over an arc, where you normally would be going over an arc, there's no string. So it takes some time to get used to playing that kind of a thing. And although I think there's promise to it, I like it, it does take some getting used to, um, it's better to just go ahead and get a very slight radius, a gentle radius, like a 20-inch, uh, and to use that. Uh, it just seems to work a lot better that way. So, so I don't know how many people are going to watch this, um, but if you have questions for me regarding cleaning the uh, the garage, uh, don't ask. <laughs> Uh, I really don't know, and I've thought about it. Uh, I thought this was going to be the year where I just go ahead and wipe everything out and put everything in, but that, that's been the whole deal is that uh, when I started this gig, I just started to collect and collect more and collect more, and eh, what you see now is a result of it. Cleaning it is not the furthest from my mind. Yeah, let's take a look at that monster in the corner. There he is. Now, I hate spiders, so I'm really sorry. And I'm going to be looking at that on the 28-inch monitor going, Why? Why did I shoot that? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a quick line up here. That should be pretty good, actually. And get the veining bit out. <clears throat> That is dead center. Very nice. You know, they say measure twice, cut once, right? I measure more times than I like to talk about. That is dead center. And we dead center up here. Now, there are ways of getting this to stay perfect the whole way across here. The best thing that I've found is tape, double-sided of course, but what, uh, one of the things that we can do is we can put in uh, little blocks of wood to and clamp that wood down to hold it right in the spot that it should be in. Uh, we're not doing that. We're just two-sided taping it down, wherever that shit went, and uh, that's that. I'm going to make sure that it lines up right. Then we get to cut some front slots. That's it. Ah, two-sided tape. Yeah. All right. So, weirdly and very importantly, you keep the headstock down. Ah, something about keeping the knife sharp. <laughs> and it is. It'll take off a thumb if I do this right. I don't want to do that, of course. <laughs> uh, so, at any rate. Listening to the lovely birds outside of the window. More guitar philosophy. So we talked about neck shape. We talked about body shape. 
So yeah, I use a 20 inch radius. I think that that works really well for shred and non-shred alike. Uh, you get all the bends that you want if you're a blues cat. You get all the, uh, the shred that you want if you're not. Your fingers just thank you for it. And at the same time, your, uh, your picking hand is pretty naturally accustomed to the shape playing over that arc, like I said before. So it's, it's kind of a, a real nice win-win. All right, so here's the important part. We're not really locking this shit down yet. Uh, we will, but we're not yet. So you just kind of gently set it down. Go over it again with this to make dead sure. Don't touch it, just get on it. Get down on it. Get down on it. It's dead on. And that's dead on. See, that's that's what makes Kirk happy. So all we have to do is cut it at this particularly perfect angle. Mind our lines. And everything should be fine. We should stay pretty steady the whole way. Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pop the veining bit out. Again, we just use the veining bit, which is uh, a very sharp point like so, uh, to give me an exact dead center. And then after that, we go in for the kill with something a little more rounded. And that's where the cove bits come in. Wow, this must be a spectacular view of the wall. Let me fix that. There we go. So again, veining bit. I use that again to mark a dead center where the neck needs to be in this jig. Then we go in with this cove bit, which is nice and rounded. And that'll match the round radius found here on the top of the truss rod. It'll work. Oh, you'll see. It'll be lovely. So we got to go over it with several passes, as before mentioned. And these are really short which is kind of unfortunate. So I've got to rig this up in a way that doesn't make me completely happy. So I've got the call, which is the little piece on the inside, uh, moved out just a wee little bit, about a quarter of an inch really. And I've got the cove bit in there, but it's not in as far as I would like it to be. And then one more time. I like to go just a little over snug. And that's good. So let's see where we're at here. Pop that in like so. Bring it over to the side like that. Are we still recording? Hell yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's get a better angle though. And try to stay out. Stay out of my way. You know, I've been thinking about like a great guitar build off. Ah, yes, the angle. Yep, just mark that line and watch the line. Here we go. Uh, or uh, when I plug it in, here we go. <laughs> so I used to run this thing's power uh, through one of those giant floor strip things. And it works really nice, but... Um, it draws too much power for that. <laughs> so.
So there will be some shims, otherwise we're going to be forcing a deflection here or there. Yeah, that's nice. Actually, yeah, that is really nice. All right, so get the larger bit out and hit the end, and we'll make a few adjustments as we go with a uh, with a round file. And then we'll throw in a couple of very small strips of veneer with some glue on one side and make sure that we have a nice straight true truss rod. Incidentally, uh, if I was going to be selling this guitar, which I'm not, and I think I've made that pretty clear, um, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> uh, what I would do because I won't sell a guitar I wouldn't buy. Um, and if I were to know about the uh, congenital issue, I'd be all like, nope, 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 nope. Because that could cause problems later on. At that point, I would just stop, start again. Literally just build a new neck for it. Okay, so how far down does this go? There's our marker again. And in this case, I'm going to be holding it up like this, and make sure that's nice and steady there. Yeah. Uh, there, just like that. Okay, here we go. didn't mark. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good. Uh, what I was going to say is I did not mark where to stop. And that's like super important to do. <laughs> down just a hair. That's actually pretty good. That needs to be tapered in. The quick change artist changes quickly. But yeah, if I was going to do this, I would come up with a neck that is perfect and true in every way. And yeah, CNC's sound pretty good. You know, I used to do this whole part without uh, without the neck taper in place. It was just uh, kind of a convenience to do it without. And I would do it in the router table. And it was pretty good, but every once in a while it would be not pretty good. Why is this not going in? It's pretty welded in there, but yeah. All right. So this needs to be just a little more. There we are. Okay. Now all we're doing with that guy is we're going in same approximate depth and a little less than the original channel. Oh, holy smokes. 
Oh, that's almost perfect. I'm going to need to go just a little deeper in the primary channel. Not much. So down to that shelf and then back up just a hair. Yep. All right, perfect. I need to go just a little deeper with that shelf. So Unfortunately, although I'm right on just about everything else, it looks as if the end needs to come down a little bit further still. So, quick swap one more time. This will be the last time. Hopefully, I can get that thing out. <laughs> but I've got ideas for how to do that, like using clamps and force. It should help out great deal. Usually it's a little more cut and dry than this. I mean, a lot more cut and dry than this. Like uh, Jeremy's, for instance. All I did was take pictures of it, but in reality, it came out very, very quick. Three cuts done. You know, two passes each. And that was the end of that. It was quick as all get out. That's just going to dull my shit. All right, pair of pliers, where are you? Actually, that might work. Yep, that worked. Nice. All right, back to it. Just in there. Just sitting out there. Just a hair deeper. And in this case, the G spot is the guitar spot. Yay! <laughs> I'm such a dummy. Ah, okay, so where are we? Right there, right there. In. We're going just a hair more. Tiny bit with a chisel here. I'll take off a little on the end. Just take a little bit more. Transition a little bit. One, two, three, seven. Just gonna find three. Transition. So after this, we'll be onto something significantly more enjoyable. What's that, you may ask? Fret slot cutting. It's pretty oily wood. I've mentioned that before. And the thing that kind of amuses me a little bit about the idea of doing this here is that uh, it's probably going to be a rather, rather slow I don't even care for the Three Stooges, and I still say it like that. All right, so try this guy up. Truss rod in. Very nice. Am I going to have to shim it? No. Will I? Yeah. Because that's what we do. Just to make absolutely damn sure nothing's going to be going anywhere. I don't like a rattly truss rod. You don't like a rattly truss rod. Is that good enough to sell? Actually, that's pretty close, but... Yeah, actually that is. <laughs> uh, it's pretty damn close. Uh, There's a little gap there and I don't like that. A little gap there and I don't like that. Uh, that is just because instead of having this thing perfectly... Well, th this and the base of the uh, router is not completely centered like it should be. <sighs> that will be fixed in time. Maybe not with this build, but with the next one. That way we won't have to worry about all that stuff. Okay, so 
The nut marking here is kind of a generalization. Let me explain this. Uh, I've designed my guitars in such a way as to where the 24th fret is pretty much directly over the last teensy bit of wood at the edge of the, uh, the neck there. So where the nut's going to be is approximately there. Uh, that is an approximate measurement to allow me to kind of put where the headstock is going to go, which is why I leave some overage here. So now let's set this guy aside <coughs> and uh, slowly imagine our lungs uh, collapsing from the horrible, horrible, awful stuff that my lungs are going through right now. So uh, 25 inch scale, 25 and a half inch scale is flipped around on the other side here where the notches are. And uh, this way, you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, I am. So 25 and a half inch here. Cut nuts, end of fretboard, yaw. So why three inches if your fretboard is only going to be at the end, at maximum, two and three-eighths inches? Well, because three inches is the width of this, just under three inches, which we are, about an eighth under, and you will see the pins. You can square this, because the edge is pretty square, square the edge to one side, and uh, just kind of move along from there. So the question is, what do we want our fretboard to look like? Uh, we have to assume that these uh, paint dots will not be there. They won't be. Uh, but do I like that for a fretboard? Do I like that? Kind of like that. So this would have to be the low end, and this would be the high end. Oh, look, a little tiny knot in the middle. So if we were to look at the other side, there's that knot. So it goes through like so. Interesting. Uh, this would be right out. And this way. So I like that for the base side. And that's that. Okay, so that's there. Let's make darn sure that everything lines up nicely. So if that is where that's going to go for the end of the fretboard, right there, cut that square. And that will go here. Twenty fourth fret there, twenty fifth fret right next to it. Yep, that's right. So why twenty fifth fret? You may ask. Well, it's actually kind of a simple thing. So I don't really put a twenty fifth fret in. That's the end of the fretboard. Uh, the 25th fret is kind of a 25th fret in name only, uh, just because, there we are, if I was to uh, cut the fretboard there, it's a pleasing kind of aesthetic decision. If I was to cut it longer than that, it would look weird. And if I was to cut it shorter than that, I risk losing functionality, and I also risk losing the, the pleasing aesthesis. It is what it is. So, let's get this thing going. Looks like I'll have to take another trip back inside. My little portable drill is in there, so I'd have to fetch that out. And one of the things that we're using that for is to drill pilot holes for our indexing pins. The fretboard is tapered, or the fretboard is not tapered, but the fret, la, 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 the neck is. So we want that to go right. So speaking of going right, let's double check our measurements real quick on that. Notice I'm not pressing it down and just set it in place. And move this up to 
there. That's the place. That's the one. Okay. So. No center lines yet. Everything's going to work off of the, uh, this being a 90 degree angle. Uh, popped up to the nut. Yeah, it's starting to get a little late. Looks like about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. No. 8.30. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway, here we go. So this is going to be cut off completely. In the future. And all these are going to get cut deeper at another point in time. Or I could just arrange that now. I don't have that equipment out here. Normally, I collect this stuff, any of the stuff that comes out, as far as like, from this goes. Well, let's talk a little bit more. I don't buy any fretboards. It's like the, uh, I don't like the aesthetics of it. I just, uh, I don't think it's pretty. I mean, it can be, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a working class person, you know? I, uh, I go to work, like everybody else. And I like a clean look. And to me, that clean look says no binding. But I do like the benefits of one of the things that you do when you bind a neck. And that's... Uh, Cutting the tang of the frets so you don't see the tang on the side of the fretboard. I just think it's very uh, it's very appealing. If you were to get some fret sprout, you know, like with radial shrinkage, this doesn't have very much of that, by the way, which is kind of nice. Um, it's another reason why I wanted to use it. But anyway, what I was saying is the uh, the hidden fret ends have been kind of a, a, a thing in modern guitar making. A lot of them, a lot of larger manufacturers are doing it, and I'm totally sold on the idea. I think it's great. Anyway, should you experience radial shrinkage, uh, it usually means you were in the pool. You were in the pool. Uh, but if you experience radial shrinkage, um, the fret sprout that occurs will be minimized. As a result of that, another thing that you can do to help minimize that is to round over the, uh, the frets prior to installing them. You know, like the hemispheric frets that uh, Highland talked about. But I think he way over engineers this, the approach to doing it. And his is much more mechanistic uh, fashion. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I think he's put a lot of thought into it and it works for him and good. Uh, for me, I like skill and ability in an art sense. Um, so is it repeatable? Yeah. But do you have to have the skill and technique in order to be able to repeat that? Yeah. Kind of like when you're playing Paganini or something, uh, you learn how to do it and you just kind of improve on the process as you go. And eventually you'll be able to do it in a way that sounds like art, at least kind of, we hope. And that's kind of the way I'm explaining it, even if it isn't quite the right way of explaining it. So I don't have a jig for that. Some things you have to be super, super careful with, and you have jigs for it. Critical measurements, and we've talked about critical measurements. Some things aren't that critical. Like, uh, frets are critical. Position of the fretboard on the neck is kind of critical, you know? Rounding over frets to make them little hemispheres on the ends. As long as they're cut 
to the correct length. Be artistic about it. I have a uh, coved out, rounded out, uh, stone bit for my Black & Decker Dremel knockoff. <laughs> By the way, the thing works great. It was not that expensive. Uh, but to me, that absolutely works beautifully for rounding over the frets. You just have to hold the fret wire and kind of glide that around in a certain way and then turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. And it works every time. Um, the thing is, it leaves open the option to screw up. And I think that's where the artistry comes in. It's more challenging. And it's fun. And if you make a very small mistake, you can fix it. If you make a blatant, raging, huge mistake, you can't. So there's a little bit of thrill involved. I buy my uh, I buy my fret wire big ass coils, so I've got a spare. Anyway, one of the things that I was going to do with this guitar is I was going to try two different fret wires. Well, how's that going to work? Well, let me tell you. They're both very close to being the same fret height, right? One is 58. One is 57. The, the difference comes in the narrowness of the frets. And I was thinking that um, an idea, because nobody has all original ideas. I get a lot of mine from Hamer, and I absolutely adore them. Uh, one of the things I'm not doing that I usually do is have like a, uh, a pre-stressed neck design, much like they do, or just pre-stressed and multi-laminate, uh, like this one, actually. I'll show you that. So this is pre-stressed multi-laminate here. Um, you have two pieces of maple. I'm not worried about that. That's on the uh, bottom side of the neck. That would come off anyway. Uh, two pieces of maple, one piece of birch, two strips of, uh, and this is pretty well quarter sawn birch. Uh, this is uh, cherry strips in the middle of it. And that was just for aesthetic purposes, nothing more. Uh, but the deal is, it's pretty. Uh, but it's much more solid. Um, Jeremy's neck was made of one piece of uh, cherry turned against itself and uh, works really, really well. That's for the shadow caster, the last video I did. Uh, this one, as you mostly astute folks out there, I'm sure, have noticed, we did it with one piece of Iroko. Now, why, if I'm so into these engineering tactics of getting a really, really solid fretboard, or uh, neck, why would I change it up right there? Well, I changed it up for speed. Also, uh, this stuff has a Jenka hardness the same as uh, Eastern Rock Maple, so in theory, it should still be pretty good as like a Jackson neck, what say, from uh, the 1980s. I'm using Eastern Rock Maple as well. But we're also one piece. Well, at any rate, the different sizes of frets, I was thinking, uh, are the, the massive super jumbos down here, and then I've got slightly less lesser jumbos uh, that I could do from, let's say, fret 20 on. Uh, although that's not really necessary, uh, I was saying that Gary Kramer and uh, his Turbulence series guitars had, uh, once you pass the 24th fret, more narrow... Uh, is that right? Yeah, I got there. Uh, more narrow frets on it to make for easier fretting on the extremely closer together fretting. So I was thinking about doing that here just to make fretting the much, much higher range a little easier. Well, arguably. Um, easier. The the thing is, you know, fret wire, if it's really, really wide, you kind of glide over the top of it. Plays much faster. The more narrow fret wire feels like your fingers are catching in between. And I use, like, so I was saying Super Jumbo. I mean, this is really majorly honking stuff. The deal is, just haven't done it before. This is why we experiment. 
the experiment to find things out. We might as well have a little fun with it in the process and do more than just do some thought experiments, right? Thought experiments are great, but making them reality is even better sometimes. I mean, as long as it's not like hybridizing humans with mnRNA, or mRNA, excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, I might as well tell you if you didn't already guess from that Megadeth video. Um, I'm not exactly uh, a whack job, super purple hair leftist uh, person. <laughs> I'm much more ordinary. And uh, although I'm way into art art of science, and I'm huge on science. I'm also really, 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 really not huge on the idea of playing God with people's genome. You know, let's, hey, let's, let's get uh, the idea of a conspiracy, by the way, is that uh, more than one person come together with a goal in mind that they try to make actionable and make it happen. Uh, I conspire at my job with the people that I work with to make the thing that we make. For instance, so conspiracies are real. You know, the Revolutionary War was a conspiracy, if you think about it. What people call a conspiracy theory was actually a conspiracy theory, right? The CIA came up with the idea of calling people who thought that there was more than one gunman uh, than Lee Harvey Oswald. They called them conspiracy theorists as a derogatory thing. And that's where it came from. So all i got to ask you guys is, do you trust your government? If the answer is yes, I question your rationale. They've done enough to and in the name of people to make it to where if you don't question them, I question you. Yeah. But I mean, what do I know? I'm just a guitar player who is into a whole lot of crap like this. Fun stuff. Anyway... <laughs> All I can say is that I've only known people who, uh, who've had the vaccine How do I say this right? I don't know anybody who has not been vaccinated that regrets it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> So it's been an interesting conversation with all y'all. Our fretboard is cut. Boy, that that's fun. But anyway, uh, all the fret slots get in deepened after a while, or over time. Um, all of these big chunks here, they'll be gone. Because I've got to cut out this part here. And... Actually, I've got to cut off that part entirely. So let's just go ahead and do that now. I don't feel like moving around too much. So we're holding on to that right now. So we'll just do this. There we go. Let that do the holding for me. Like a nice big bench dog. So that's the 25th fret. We're taking that out. And that's not working as well as I was hoping. So we'll tighten that down a little bit more. But at any rate, hey man, uh, you know, you do you. If you want to be patentable, you go right ahead. Uh, that's 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 what freedom's all about, right? The freedom to not be free. Well, I choose to be free. And uh, most of the way, not free anyway. When you think about it, just about anything that you do requires permission from the state or your local municipalities. How high can you build a fence in the front yard of your house? And if you don't own a house, ask your parents. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Just about there. Yeah, that's just about. Yeah. That's it. There we go. So that's cut. Now let's do the same thing with this. Just get that out of the way, and we'll have our nice straight edge. Just like this. Yes. 
So, uh, vaccinated Matt from Texas Toast Guitars. Love to have a beer with you sometime, man. I'm not really a beer drinker. I'm not really a drinker like I used to be. But if you're ever in Western Washington, there's a local cidery I sell some of my guitars at. And I've got some pretty good friends out there. Uh, love to sit with you and yak. And if you have to have beer, we'll go across the street. Anyway, it's a nice, uh, that's it. Right there. So, when do we do inlay? Excellent question. After this is glued on, but before we do frets. There we go, almost there. There we are. Just like that. Good, good. Oh, this left quite a bit of a money trail. Anyway, I don't say the stuff that I'm saying to rile you up. If it riles you up, maybe you've got more problems than, uh, than you should. There's a lot of stuff that you probably already think about that, you know. <sighs> well, anyway, all I can suggest is stay the hell off of Reddit. Maybe get onto Mines or something like that. It's a much nicer place. If you have to have social media, you might as well be able to speak your mind. That's where that comes in really, really handy. But I encourage you, you know, the discourse is the important part. If you don't think that it's important to talk about ideas, I mean, you've already lost, buddy. You've already lost. Nothing can be done about that. If you want to discuss, on the other hand, you'll find that the people that are in my camp... Don't hate you for being wrong. We just think you're wrong. Well, most of the people on the other side of the camp absolutely hate us if we dif disagree because they make false equivocations of what it means to be evil. And as for this purpose, the stuff that I've just talked about, this isn't going to go on YouTube, but I'll link to it from YouTube. This is going to go on Rumble, where I can actually talk about the shit. That's unfortunate. But, it's okay. Because so although we have a tiny bit of chip out here, didn't expect that, one of the ways that we are going to deal with that is this extraordinarily thin fretboard. And I made it thinner than usual, by the way. Uh, most of the time, uh, my fretboards are just a hair thicker than this. Probably coming in at uh, 3 8 uh, This is almost exactly a quarter. It's a little thinner than that, actually. But um, the reason for that is, uh, with a 20-inch radius, I'm going to take it down a bunch. Uh, I want the thinner neck, and in order to get the thinner neck that I want, I'm going to have to make it thinner from the fretboard side as well as the, the back side. There's only so far you can go on the back uh, because of the truss rod. Um, so you have to come down on the front at some point, too. So at any rate, that's that. Uh, let's uh, stop talking conspiracy. And uh, you and I, whoever you are out there in guitar land, uh, let's conspire to affix a fretboard. <laughs> to a neck. Nope, we're gonna have to come down just a minute. Make sure that's right. Oh, that's it. I see. nice sharpening system out there for these. Not so much a sharpening system, but... So I subscribe to a lot of woodwork here, uh, woodworking channels. And uh, one of the ones 
old guy, link in the description, can't think of his name right now, uh, mentioned these really, really cheap diamond uh, cutting, what are they, uh, like sharpening stones. And I have to say that if he has enough subscribers, 40,000 or something like that, then everything disappeared immediately upon him releasing that video. So uh, I went online, to, of course, to find them on Amazon, and they were gone. They were gone. So uh, time heals all wounds. It doesn't really heal anything. It's just, uh, you know, the whole Bosch thing, closure is a myth. It's kind of true. Uh, but what I can say is, interestingly, time does restock shit. And with that, let's see where we're at here. <laughs> Dead on. Right on. So, here. That. That's right. So, that is. That'd be. Okay, so. A couple of things must be done from here. Right there. Okay. That's the spot. Oh, yeah. Hear all that thumping back there? I think I've got some raccoons living around the back of my garage. I mean, who knows? Could be a bum. That is exactly where it needs to be. Good. And so, here, I'm still. It's kind of funny. All right, so my guitar here. Actually, I'm going to bring that back just a hair. Just like that. Right there. Okay, so that's where that's going to be. Probably. There we go. Just like that. Slightly better lighting there. Oh yeah, raccoons. I'm hearing uh, raccoony noises back there now. Going. <laughs> so, fun times in the garage, right? Giant spiders, raccoons. You know, when I moved to Alaska in 1995, uh, I had a friend uh, that one of the last things she said to me was have fun playing with wildlife. Uh, I did not enjoy Alaska, by the way. It was not my cup of tea. Or coffee, as it were. I was not impressed with the weather. And I got a whole new outlook on... Uh, right there. I got a whole new outlook on uh, bald eagles. They are scavengers. Nothing more.
tell you what, lighter fretboards like, what the hell was I thinking on that one? Lighter fretboards like this. Oh, I wasn't. Somehow that just got marked. Uh, are much, much better. Much better. Oh shit, Mama Kitty's outside and there's raccoons. Uh, let's see if I can fix that before any kind of real problems start to occur. Let's put this down here now. I can hear them back there, so I know where they are, and that's that's good. But that's good. there's my center line. How about them apples? All right, now with that, line that up. So this is an eyeball. I remember not eyeballing this before. So I will not eyeball this now. Three eighths both sides. That's a pretty good eyeball. That should do it. So we're going to take that out here. That'll fit real nice over there. Let's see if I can hold this up and see what's back there, huh? Because, yes, the back of my garage is wide open. <laughs> hey, if anybody out there wants to fix it, let me know. Let's see if there's any wildlife back there that we can see. You see any? Uh, I mean, I'm going to have to check the footage later, but I don't see any. Anyway, uh, if anybody wants to offer a discount rate and lives in the Pacific Northwest, uh, come and talk to me. I'd be happy to come and talk to you at least, uh, you know, as long as you're not in Seattle or something. Uh, now a lot of times I also make a little design here going up and around uh, I've elected to not do that for this build why? I don't know. Most of the time I would make a curve out like so. And uh, I'm just not doing it with this one. Take that. All right, so I need to take this, speaking of take that, and take a file, this flat file to there, and even that up a wee bit. And so one of the things I was thinking about was instead of using dust, like I was talking about before with the, uh, the fret ends, the hidden fret ends, I was thinking about instead using plugs. And I've not done that before. I just think that might be an interesting idea. Let's do a test fit, see what it looks like. Yeah, I just had a thought. This is probably going to get busted down to multiple videos. <laughs> Holy shit, that's perfect. Uh, right on the line. And right there on the line. That is it. So, I just think this is kind of neat that I'm doing the first, one of the, that's the first time, I think it is actually, 
um, that I've ever gone ahead and made all this out of the same piece of material. It's really pretty neat. And I think it's going to match the uh, black guitar pretty well. I was going to do a matching black headstock cap, and that's what it's going to take the, uh, the extra day. So uh, a couple of things that we do in advance of gluing this on is I do the taper for the headstock. And that is going to happen right now. So if we don't, um, I think a few bits of words about this. If we waited to taper this after the fact, just consider the following. Did you consider it? <laughs> I go about an inch out before I start my taper. Yeah, if we if we waited to do the taper on this until after the guitar itself was laid up. Then we just created more problems. What kind of problems? Well, I got a fretboard on here, and now I've got to make a cut to take off this material. Well, what kind of, <laughs> if you'll pardon me, what kind of dumb shit would I be if I actually did that? That is dumb with a capital D U M B. I take this down to 5 8 and we nurse it back, by the way, from 5 8 to a half inch toward the end of the process. There we go. Right about the time I start drilling for uh, tuners. It's actually after that, but still. All right, so we've got that, and I'm not taking that part off, I'm just taking the top. And that should take us to about here, which is right about where the, if we are doing our math right, right about where the first... I don't want to go over that, so let's not... <clears throat> material here. Hmm. I'm breaking out. This wood is not fun. All right, so there. And I want to end it right there if I can. So. Good enough. Keep this never know when you're going to need it. Take this to the sander, this guy right here, and we're going to sand that down the rest of the way and try to get it as even as we can. So you see, as messy a shop as I've got, No, vice versa. Ah, oh, snap. <laughs> I'm cutting that part out. Even. Woo! So, all right. Anyway, so that part is finished. This is where we can get creative 
Even if we all agreed never to get creative again. Uh, I may not have completely agreed to that. So I take out this delightful Oh, right. <laughs> reverse headstock, Kirk. Reverse. Reverse means other way. So if that's center, I also have to redraw the center line for... Yep, I think that's satisfactory. It's very satisfying. Okay. Take a look at the outline. So, as you can probably imagine, the taper bit uh, will be a little difficult to do if we cut this out first. So, what will wind up happening is we're going to glue the fretboard on. And before I even do that, oh, that's actually leaking out of there. That's weird. Jeez. Uh, I hope it's not like super toxic. Anyway, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to map out my neck profile. Or at least the depth of it. To do that, we. All right, so here we're going to map out the neck profile, or at least a good portion of it. So I'm going to use this, and I think what I want to do is do, let's see, that's half an inch. How deep is your love? Let's Plenty of meat. So we'll go with nine sixteenths. Again, check, check, check. Plenty of meat. But I'm not going any thinner than that for sure. So let me go up one just extra. Teeny tiny little bit. All right. Mark here. So for the nut, there will be a large volute. And I like large volutes. A lot of people are like, oh, why do you like your volutes so big? I like my volutes big because I don't like my headstocks to break. Arguably, they don't anyway, but still. So, three quarters. Right there. And we go down one inch. And like I said, we usually roll up from one inch to three or to seven eighths for the neck pocket. But I like to be on the safe side. I'm going to roll all the way around here with this measurement. Neck doesn't go out this far, by the way, in the body. Just doesn't. But I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to make my marks here. So yeah, something I'm going to definitely have to look up on the wood database. I am fascinated by that stuff. Probably not good for you. Probably super toxic. I have no idea. All right, so now that we have these lines drawn, I'm going to do a quick transition here, which means there's going to be a cut here, probably another cut there out of that bandsaw. But 
I'm gonna go like so. It's actually quite a substantial taper. And that's my line. So the neck is gonna be that deep. Like I said, I want it thinner. And we're not talking about taper here at all, but we are talking about a neck that at the first fret is less than an inch thick. It is looking like seven eighths and one inch at the 17th fret. Not bad in my humble opinion. Opinion's not even French. How about them apples? You know, I might just use this for my own personal archives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Undercut that shit. Let's see, where is that pivoting? Right there. That's the spot. All right, chisel. Back at you. Just didn't quite cut that part deep enough, I guess. Plenty deep farther than this in. I say this works pretty well. Just kind of take a little notch through at a time. Do it right, it comes out pretty even. Need a little bit of hair here and there that you gotta blow out. No biggie. Yeah, no biggie because he's dead. Now we got to get some indexing pins happening here. And the neat part is, we're really damn close to being finished with this part. So, one of the things that I like to... Oh. Well. Got a song stuck in my head. I haven't heard it for years. Fame Consequences by Megadeth. That looks better. Much better. All right, so here's what's next. I'm going to drill some indexing holes pretty close to the center. Going out a little bit further, I'm going to use four and a couple of toothpicks, and then we'll get this thing glued up. I'm back! All right, so uh, I need to find a very, very small drill bit in there somewhere that I brought out. For those, I swear to you. So, the deal with this part is, it's uh, it's another one of those criticalities. Where are you? There we go. So to get this right, you have to kind of rely on clamping pressure. And, uh, you know, hope for the best and stuff. Um, insofar as the clamping pressure is concerned, it's just literally to keep us in the right spot. And that's it. So, what about the... There it is. A teeny tiny, oh, it's a bit of drill bit. 
And it's just the same size as one of these. So, the deal is we want to drill a little bit. We don't want to drill a lot of it. We want to drill through here and into the next surface, the subsurface. And I'm going to do it on the, uh, what are those things called anyway, fret slots. So this way, when our frets are on it, it's not going to be visible. There's one. And that is good. Okay. So, a little further out on this one. You didn't move, did you? You move? You felt like you moved. You did. All right. So, not going to use that one. Going to use this one instead. All right. And one more down here. So, there's three, but we're not using one like I said before. Uh, and then one down here. Should be... Should be good right there. All right, so now that we've done that, we use our brain. Not this one. This one, this one. Ooh, that's barely there, though. This one, this one, that one, and that one. And the reason why we want to get them close to the center is a couple of reasons. The, the center of the neck is thicker than the uh, outer portions of the neck. If I was to taper this, and I'm going to, you know, cradle kind of a shape in the back, uh, the problems will start to arise in the sense that when it's done, you will see where the, <laughs> where the indexing pins were, and we don't want to do that. So I'm just widening the holes in the back a little bit, not too much in the front. Just dancing around it. That's all I'm doing. All right. That'll be nice. Okay, so at this point, tape that up. Yes, I do ascribe to taping this. I, I can already tell, you know, in the guitar know-it-alls that, you know, you really don't need to do that here. You, you just need the free at the two ends. Pound sand. It's a preference. It is needed to a certain degree to make sure that you are not gluing things that ought not be glued. And your truss rod ought to be free to roam about the countryside. Not in that part. Uh, there we are. In the places it should be free to roam about the countryside. And just because you don't like it doesn't mean it isn't good. Take that. I know you won't, oops, but I'm freely offering you the that that you can take. Yeah, I don't need to do that from there. So I'll just cut that there, peel that off from there, and that's good. Now, the radio station that's playing in my head is changing. Suddenly it's the still of the night that I'm hearing. Where it sounds like shut up and show me love. Shut up, show me love. Shut up, show me love. In the still of the night. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. There's no need to hide. 
Yeah, ain't no doubt, man. It's it's actually getting kind of late out here. To a point where I'm going to have to stop making noise. And we are approaching quickly the end of day one anyway for this build. And I can't even call it a day. I've been out here for several hours. Boy, this knife is just saying no. No cutty tippy. Yeah, it's weird. It's like still of the night meets uh, train of consequences. Still got the rhythms of that going in my head. But in the still of the night. Oh, aside from that, so that's some weird shit. Maybe that needs to be a mashup. Uh, any talented mashupians out there, uh, get to work and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I doubt it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so. Another thing we've got to do in advance of this is to prep our... Yeah, that's actually a little bit more movie than I like. So we're prepping these by chopping them here in the center. So we'll have two. Whoop. And four. Why do I bring out extra? Because you can lose these and it sucks. So it's just a little bigger than I like, too. Good Lord. Um... Well, we'll make do. These are pretty good for guides anyway. Yeah, same drill bit as before. Now yeah, these are a little larger than they need to be. I'm actually kind of worried about the size of that hole. Might have to fill it somewhat. I mean, if those are a little large, this ought to be swimming. Kind of indexing would that be? Uh, so I'm reaching some some catharsis here recording this project. I'm thinking that maybe the time I was taking before was better. You know, if I find a smaller drill bit than that, I will be really surprised. But right now I'm thinking that that's the one thing that I should have been... As the prophecy foretold. Now it's the same size. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, all right, let's glue some shit up. No, for real, dog. Let's do that. So, so bradles, alls. They're good for all sorts of reasons. Not the least of which is sticking things, but also known as a sticky pokey. Thanks, Matt. I'd love to have you on a first name basis, dude. That's that's no BS right there. You and Chris over at TNT, Texas Toast, that is, are just awesome, wonderful fellas. Just regular Joes, you know. And I've learned a lot from you. Although I think you're too busy to watch this. <laughs> you know, seems how you're probably not watching this. I'm going to go ahead and make some complaints, all right? And one of the biggest ones I have is your relationship with Dylan from Dylan Talks Tone. Think of him what you will. I had an interaction with him on Twitter once. And I will say... Ass hat. So, why? Well, look. The guy has expensive taste. No shit. He has expensive taste. People can have expensive tastes. I'm not going to hold it against you directly for having expensive tastes. But I will hold against you if you're an idiot about it. So he posted a thing with no comment on a $10,000 Fender. Now look, I know guys with expensive tastes. I do. Um, a good friend of mine, in fact, where I'm working, 
like to consider him that at least, has very expensive tastes. But I'll put my Casio up against your Rolex any day of the week, and I'll bet you mine will last longer. It'll also probably work just as well without any of the hang-ups of it being like a $10,000 or more Rolex. All they have to do is function. All they have to do is really work. This thing didn't even look fantastic. It just looked like, you know, a vintage guitar. And it wasn't, you know, super bells and whistly or anything like that. One of the first comments on there was from a guy who was like, boy, that looks great. I'm like, you know, you're, you're, you're basically, you're buying bullshit here. They're selling it to people who can afford it, yeah. They're not selling it to somebody who can't afford it. But it's not like a daily driver. This is a wall guitar, if anything. It's an investment-grade wall guitar. It's not going to be awesome for you all the time. You're not going to play it all the time. And he argued about liking nice things. He wasn't even arguing about the veracity of my argument. Which is like, look, and I'm not... As you probably took from my earlier conversations, I am not even close to being a commie. But I hate overpriced bullshit. I'm not trying to say that nobody needs a Corvette. I'm saying that in the case of a guitar, what is a guitar's intended use? The guitar is a tool. It is a means to an end. Not an end unto itself. Don't be an idiot. I'm not saying that you don't need this because of some sort of, you know, price perception. You know, the commie blah blah bullshit that uh, is out there so much about you don't need an AR-15. You don't need a Corvette with, you know, four or five hundred horsepower. Yeah, you, you kind of do. But again, this is all about intended use. The $10,000 guitar functionally could not do as much as this guitar, which I'm keeping, but if I did sell it, it would probably fetch 14 if I'm lucky. And on a good day, you know, 14 but uh, aside from that, I would only ask 14 if you decided to pay me 1000 you know, we could talk. Uh, oh, I did look up Iroko. There's no glue issues, so I don't have to naphtha this before... Uh, take off, and I will make sure all the shit's off the bottom of it. We don't need extra shit hanging out and being extra shitty. You get to my meaning? Anyway, he didn't have any good arguments. He basically was saying, like, I don't know, man, it's nice, and I like nice things. I'm like, you can like nice things. I don't give a shit. My argument was that it's stupid to pay that much for an instrument. It's, I, it's, it is literally dumb to pay more than $1,500 for a guitar. I personally would never do it, so I will never sell one for more than that. It's just dumb. It's a dumb idea. It's a bad idea. It's wrong on so many levels to me. I just, I just cannot, there's no justification, man. It just can't be done. All right. So all this is kind of set up pretty okay. Go around and make it a clippity clippity. Clippity clippity. Oops. Clippity clippity. Clippity clippity closer. There we go. Clippity clippity. There we go. And clippity clippity. All right. Now I'm going to uh, go over this with a chisel. And just gently get those a little more flush. Set up time for Type Bond 2, which is what I use, is a little bit. Uh, four minutes, I think. So I've got a little time to play. Not a lot, just enough. Alright, so I've got a neck that didn't turn out very well. It was the third neck I ever made. It 
It is flamed maple. It's a good A-grade flamed maple. It's all the way through. The thing is, I had uh, made my cuts wrong and effectively cut myself very short. So what wound up happening with this is it's now a really, really nice thing to I can clamp with, but nothing more. Um, until I make something headless, and then all bets are off, and it shall be special and fun. So I don't like going all the way to both ends. I like to make sure that my center lines are centered. So I'm going to move this out a little bit, and I glue it, I glue it to the table. Clamp it to the table, really. And that's that. Another thing that I like to do is to make sure that my shit is at 90 degrees. Yeah, that moves way too much for my happiness. So we're going under. Just to try to make sure that it doesn't move. don't want to go under here that's good yeah that's good all right now with those on do these. Another one around here somewhere. Oh, yeah, right behind me. <laughs> the great part about this is, is I don't need to like super clamp. Just clamp well. Technically, I don't need to clamp more than this now. You're good. There is a minor problem I'll share with you, if you haven't figured it out. There we are. Uh, I can't see if there's a shift occurring very easily. That will cause a shift, so I need to hold that in position. All right. That's that. All right. The next time we'll see this, <coughs> it'll be tomorrow. We'll take the excess of the uh, fretboard off, map center lines again, um, and then if there's going to be an inlay, we'll map out where that's going to go, we'll put the inlay in. We'll get a taper on this, put the frets in, Get the uh, headstock, uh, or excuse me, get the headstock taper finished cut. Uh, we'll cut out the profile and then uh, cut out the headstock shape, put in the holes for the tuners, and then we'll start finishing it. The neck will effectively be done. Uh, the body. Now, I have just taken up my primary workspace with work. Body here is part of the blank is an oversized body plank here uh, comes in two parts and it's a little on the ugly side so aren't we happy <laughs> sawdust uh, ooh. <sighs> sawdust and spider webs so anyway it's a little on the oversized side it's got a lot of staining like I said I didn't use this for the Jeremy body Shadow caster is where this one's going. The vapor caster is where his went. So, what I'm going to do with this... First off, I'm going to make sure that the body... Yeah. So, what I'm going to do... What the am I going to do? I could trim this up a bit. All I want to get out of it are apparently fireworks because the 4th of July is near. I want to get this straight 
and uh, pretty flush. And that, that's actually pretty good considering it's a sawed edge. Am I going to plane it? No. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm not going to plane it. What in the world would I possibly do with a thing if it's not planed? It's just so unusual to not plane a piece of wood if you want to get it nice and flush. Well, sir, and or madam, I'm going to sand it. And then I'm going to check for light gaps. And that's how I'm going to do it. Because I don't want to be out here all night long planing away. I want to be back inside because it's getting dark before it's before too long. You know, the monsters come out and shit. So we can't have that. But I do want to get, before I start with this, an idea of where all this stuff is going to be. And for that, I'm going to need a template. Okay, so, cutting this guy in half. From here. So, this is the only part that really needs to be square. Let me draw that out. Everything else comes out in the wash, as they say. Also need to uh, do a little modification before we start routing tomorrow. And really, this is going to be just a little higher, of course. I mean, I know this. But all it is is a trace. That's all I've got right now. I'm just tracing out an edge to give myself an idea about what needs to be good. And that's pretty much it. Here, there. So, uh, talk about, you know, always go over. Well, there's some things where you go under. On. And it's not actually, I was going to use this for the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, silly me, silly me. So, yeah, that's right. Here we are. There's that. And so back to this again. Oh, there's a check in that. Okay. That's a... Uh... Okay. So that's, that's not going to happen. This is. No checks. Alright, so what I was saying, a little deeper than it needs to be, I'm gonna draw this stuff away, is there's a couple of parts of the, uh, the template which I drew to design size, and the design size was very exact. I mean, we're talking about, it's, it is right on the money. So the fact that it's right on the money is great, but because it's right on the money here, 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 I need to actually take this out, move it down like so, and I'm going to make that just a, not much. Hair more bulbous. That that though needs to come out. No, I'm not gonna do that. That needs to come out. This needs to be a little deeper. As well as this, just a hair. Literally to the line. And the reason why. As I forgot all about the foil, <laughs> which is really funny to me because uh, that just means that the tolerances that I was at was remarkably good. I'm also going to take out a front a little bit here as well. Not too much. And all that's going to be done with this belt sander here. <coughs> and that's that. 
So I, I really like the idea of making my life easier where I can. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off. And uh, that's... Yeah, I'm going to do that with uh, the uh, bandsaw. Glutton for punishment, guys and gals. Said it before, only two. <laughs> so, back to the bandsaw. I'm going to cut this back. It's a pretty heavy hunk of wood. Done. Incidentally, if I was going to make a headstock cap, that's the stuff I would make it out of. Well, <laughs> didn't intend to get a bicep workout tonight, but I got one. <sighs> okay, so for this, this is the, this is where the woodworker and artist in me uh, collide. Because... <laughs> light type. <clears throat> Actually, that's pretty good. For what I'm doing, it needs to be understood. I'm going to take down the ends just a little bit on both. Uh, for what I'm doing, it needs to be understood that I'm going to burn this wood. And uh, in doing so, uh, it's going to actually open up uh, what's going to be the center line here. And it doesn't matter if I want it to or not, uh, it's going to happen. So, your uh, and it's going to open up that gap. <laughs> no bad, rabbit, no bad. Probably even say rabbit from uh, Steam Power Giraffe. Do a little honeybee on this action here. Not bad. Okay, so I'm going to glue this up, and then we're going to call it a night. Uh, uh, the N-I-G-H-T, not K-N-I-G-H-T variety. But, uh, you know, to each his own. Or her. There's only two. Take that. Uh, okay. <coughs> I... Suppose that since my primary surface over here for working wood is occupado, we'll just move a few things. And stuff we're gonna be using tomorrow anyway. There we will use the table saw. The reason why we're not using anything else is because of all the shit that I've got piled up around everything else. So I've got six guitar bodies over here that I haven't done shit with yet. Six of them, though. There are an innumerable amount of things on that table. But to get to the table, to clean up the table, I need to remove all that stuff. And that. All that over there, the scrap wood piles. So once I get rid of all the scrap wood, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Now, yes, I've, I had several ideas about, you know, oh, yeah, I could cut it into little pieces and make checkerboards. Or I could make uh, boards for, you know, cutting, cutting boards. Uh, no, no. Um, I would burn them. Because 
you know, I, I don't have all the time in the world. If I won the lotto or something, or uh, maybe licensed a Korean factory, it would be awesome, actually, to uh, make these as a commodity thing, and I could quit my job and just kind of play in my garage, then sure, the answer is, yeah, that's what would probably wind up happening, is I clear out everything, and all the scraps would be utilized. But until then, I mean, I've, 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 I, I got a friend uh, who is uh, kind of an entrepreneur, a bit of a woodworker himself. I got him a bunch of scraps once, and he still has yet to use them. And uh, that once was like over a year ago. So uh, it's like, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I have no idea what to do with it. Same boat as me. So uh, burn them. That sounds like a good idea to me, burn them. All right, let's talk shop. Now, I'll yak at you while getting my clamps here. Now, some people have good notions. Some people have better notions. Some people have no notions. Uh, all I know is I've tried every single thing on the, their internets for adhesion purposes and stuff. As far as the uh, nasal spray, <laughs> not cocaine. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I have tried just about everything. And the salt trick is kind of neat, you know, make sure you, your stuff doesn't move. Uh, but what works for me is nothing. I don't do that crap. I just, and it's not crap, it, 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 it works, you know. It's good for what it's for. Um, but it's not for me. What is for me is a couple of good clamps and uh, watching my setup. Watch your setup. You'll, feel, you'll be fine. Just make sure everything's cool. You get your edges right. You know, make sure everything is where it needs to be as far as like your lines are concerned. And you're good. No real super special thing needed. Except uh, my glue spreader is missing. <laughs> eh. Oh, there's one. Ah. And one of the things that I do like are silicone for glue spreading. It uh, cleans easily even if you don't clean it initially. Stuff just peels right off. So, that's one of the nicest things that I've discovered. Is this. Like I said, the glue will just come right off. Dry glue, doesn't matter. So, I'm going to use this old spatula that I used to make food with. I bought another one. <laughs> I bought an orange one. I prefer that color anyway. So we're going to go ahead and spread this glue out. Let it set for a little bit while we're doing that. And talk more shop about theory. Uh, not music theory, although I could talk about that. Uh, one of the things that I think is more fun than not for guitar building is figuring things out. You know, I always think of this as like you are making and building your own puzzles. And this is, you know, I'm just working with my designs here. I'm not working with, well, you know, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. I'm working with designs technically by like Joel Danzig, and, uh, somewhat Leo Fender in this case. Uh, you know, I redesigned the Fender Strat to suit my sensibilities. Uh, we, one of the things that really bothers me about a lot of guitar design, though, especially during the 80s, where, yeah, these are super shreddy guitars, but why in the world would you put the volume knob directly beneath where a person's hand is going to be when they're playing? Uh, because all you're going to do is make them hit the volume knob when they're playing. And what that's going to do is you're going to either increase or decrease the volume, depending on how you have it set. And that sucks. Why would you do that? Uh, modern guitars don't do that. In fact, one of the things that I admired about when Fender... Uh, bought out Jackson is it about one year uh, after the purchase or the buyout uh, the volume knobs spontaneously moved aft by one inch 
and that's pretty great. And I, I actually hold that against Hamer and uh, Jackson both. Hamer had sort of amazing design uh, things, uh, feats of engineering that were just fantastic and kind of you know obvious stuff. Why didn't people have angled input jacks for God's sakes? It's it's, it's, a, it's a miracle that uh, other people didn't have this before. So yeah. Anyway, there's that. And that note I'm going underneath. Why would I do that? Well, helps them set up straight. So, yeah, uh, miracles of stuff like that. The, the, um, but yeah, it really bugged me for, for like years. Why do they put it right here where, you know, I'm playing right there? And there we go. And I want to make note that sometimes you got to make some adjustments. Good. Now, my job is to try to clamp them where the clamps will be most effective. The obvious thing here is, yeah, it would be a lot easier, a lot, to have this thing planed up on four surfaces perfectly, where it's not moving. So, uh, guitar's finished tomorrow, looks like. So what's left? Guitar body. Rudimentary cutout with a bandsaw. And we go ahead and take our templates and we route out, after we fix the templates just a little bit, we route out the body, and we route out the, uh, the control cavities, uh, and the neck uh, pocket as well. Uh, on the neck, uh, we already talked about this and I forgot completely. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, determine the inlay question. If inlay, inlay. Side dots come after the radius. Uh, radius the fretboard. Fret the neck. Uh, however way the uh, inlay question goes. Fret the neck. Drill tuner holes. Um, now actually would be a better time than later. Cut the... Um, Cut the taper, cut the uh, the neck, profile the neck, uh, stain the body after we sand everything down, uh, stain the body, finish the neck, um, as far as like the finishes are concerned. I'm not sure. Um, again, I'll double check. Uh, what we're dealing with here is uh, alien territory for me. But stain the neck, no, no, stain the body, uh, finish the body. And uh, then we get to make the pit guards, which we'll probably do early. And uh, I'm making two because one's going to have... <sighs> Let's get this up here. One is going to have lace sensor pickups. The other is going to have uh, a set of really nice cheap pickups. And I like cheap. Cheap's good. Uh, you know, I'm frugal to a fault in some cases, but, you know, I'm picky when it comes to sound. And uh, the sound of these uh, Guitar Madness 1984s are really quite remarkable. They've got a nice mid-range peak. They're a little fuzzy in the low end, a little bit. Not very much. They're mostly pretty tight. They've got really, really good tones uh, for rhythm and lead. In fact, if you pop them into a Marshall, or pop, pop them into your guitar, of course, and then run them through a Marshall... Uh, or thereabouts a Marshall with a little bit of extra oomph in the front end. It's Judas Priest out of the box, man. It's really, really, really nice. Uh, so almost, in fact, most of the videos that I've made lately have those pickups in it. They're really great, and they're only about 30 bucks a set. No reason not to use them. 
So, uh, and on, contrarily, the lace sensors are 180, and I don't have that right now. So um, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to use that. But I will make the pick card for it. Uh, and as soon as I do get them, uh, they will be going in because I really like that sound and I want to do that again. So anyway, in the meantime, it's going to be Humbucker City. Uh, so uh, we'll make two pit guards and uh, wire it up to the humbuckers and call it good. Just a three-way toggle switch. And I'm not convinced on coil tapping right now. Um, I just want to play it. So uh, until manana.